Hi friends, welcome to Mini Monet's Art for the Young. Today we will be creating a Baby Yoda piece. And in this tutorial, you guys will learn how to sketch and paint with acrylic paints onto canvas. Now you don't necessarily have to have a canvas for your art piece, but that's what we are using today. So your supplies are going to be an artist canvas. This is wrapped around a wood frame here. And I recommend definitely putting your name on the back. You can put it on the wood frame here or the area that has the staples. I also recommend putting your age or the date just so that you have something to look back at. This right here is a 12 by 16, but you can literally use any size canvas for this. The other thing is that you don't have to necessarily use a canvas. You could also use a piece of paper, just a computer paper. You could also use a watercolor cardstock that's great for painting on, something fun that you can frame, um, really anything at this point. So we will zoom in and, cre and create our Baby Yoda together but the supplies that you will need today is going to be some acrylic paints. And I have our little palette here ready to go. And you can pick up acrylic paints at any craft supply store, Joann's, Michael's, places like that. This is just the paint that I use here. You will also need a nice sharpened pencil with an eraser because you will do erasing. I do a lot of erasing myself. You will also need an ultra fine Sharpie marker. That's going to be for the little details for the eyes. Definitely make sure you have a variety of sizes for your brushes and that's about it. So we will get started. I do want to share with you that for your baby Yoda, you do not need to worry about this Yoda being exactly like mine. Make sure that it's yours. So if you want a different color background, do a different color background. You could do a dark green or you could do a scenery behind you. Or you could do a really light brown. You guys can get super creative with this part. Um, I will show you, this is my daughter's. She's seven years old, just turned seven. And this is a great example. This is her sketch drawing that she did with me. This is a great example to show you that your piece won't look identical to mine. So embrace your own piece, okay? Be your own artist. Don't stress, don't worry about perfect pieces and lines, don't worry about perfect ear shapes and sizes. Just have fun with it, that's the whole point. Okay, so we will go ahead and zoom in and we will get started. Okay, so the first step that we are going to do is going to be the front part of Yoda's collar right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the middle of my, my canvas here and you can literally go in any area that you would like. It could be lower, it could be higher, just make sure that you give yourself enough room. And if you have a large canvas or a large paper, make sure that you really utilize all that space. So if you have a little tiny Yoda, you're gonna have just a bunch of background. So really make sure that if you have a large canvas or a large piece of paper, really keep it big. That way you're utilizing all the space that you have. So the first thing that we are going to do is create the front part of the collar here. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to start by bringing a soft curve across the page. Now this is where his little cheeks are going to rest right in here. So this is the first part. Now once I get to this part, I'm going to drop down that first line, okay? Now I wanna go to the other side of the collar so that we can continue to get over to his face. So I'm just gonna come around and do the same thing. So this right here kind of visually looks like a little bit of a smile right here. That's where his little head is gonna be squished down. So we are going to continue on to the face rather than go down into more of the cloak. So we're gonna to start to go up and we're going to start to give that nice shape for his little face. 
The key to this one is to make sure that his face isn't too tall or his head because he's really a squishy little guy. So we're just going to bring this down a little bit, curve it so it looks just a little bit like his cheeks. I like to go on either side at a time just to sort of balance it out. But again, do not stress about them having to be exactly identical. So now we have a little bit of the face shape here and I'm going to start to curve this top part around because I want it to create the top part of his head. I'm gonna go around this way. And again, I'm sort of meeting in the middle. You can see his little face will be a little bit more squished, which I like, his little head. So I'm gonna bring this curved over this way. And as you come to the center, he's got a little bit of a bump right in here. So what you wanna do is create a soft little hill, not necessarily super pointy, but just a soft little hill coming up and then coming down. And you'll notice that I'm using these really soft little strokes with my pencil so that I can erase at any point. So now we have the basic shape of our Yoda head. So before we start to go into his ears, we're going to create some facial features. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pinpoint where we'll put his cute little nose. Now his nose is small, it's sort of button-like, and you wanna start with basically going right in the middle, keep it low, don't do it too high, keep it low. And we're going to do what feels sort of like a little soft line and create that little button nose into almost like a little rounded, squishy, bumpy triangle. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a nose here. We're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. There's our little nose. Now, we are going to create those smile lines. Okay, so we're gonna bring a line down here and a line down this way. And now we will start to curve around here so it looks like that nice classic Yoda. I'm just gonna drop it down. It's gonna start to curve so that it looks like he's got those little squishy cheeks. Okay, so we've got his nose and his little smile lines at this point. Now let's create his mouth. You can do your Yoda super smiley, you can do him not so happy, or you can just have him in between. So we're just going to do a line connecting from one side to the next. Notice that my line is basically just a straight line, but it's curved just slightly, okay? So now we've got the lower part of his face. The next thing that I like to do are his eyes. And what I like to do, I like to do a little dot and notice I'm keeping them real low because his eyes are not way up here. But if you wanna do them up there, go for it. I'm keeping mine low and I'm going to do a little dot. This is going to be the corner of his eye. I'll go to the other side and I'll do the same thing. This actually looks like a little mole right now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do another dot over into the corner. This is going to give us that nice shape. So I'm gonna say, okay, here's a diagonal and I want his eyes to be about this big, I'm gonna do another little dot. Go to the other side, same thing. And this is going to give you a good structure on how to create this. So now, you're going to go from one point with an arch to the other. You can do them as big as you like, big or small. I keep my sort of an in-between arch here. Arch that. You're going to the other side. Arch. So now it looks like two little frowns or two little rainbow arches. Now you're going to go on the other underside of that eye. The underside you can make a little bit more round or bulbous if you like, but remember these are points right here and just go ahead and connect to the other side so it looks like a lemon. Go to the other side. Do not stress if those eyes are not identical. It's very difficult to have identical eyes and identical features. Okay, so you've got two eyes there, and now what I like to do is the inside. So the inside part of the eye, you're going to do the first section is going to be nice and big circle in here. So I'm just gonna pretend like I'm doing a full circle. Okay, that's gonna be the first one. Go to the second one, like so. So now we have done basically two circles, and we're going to do another one on the inside. Go ahead, go around, go around. 
Okay, now he looks a little spooky, but he'll get there. Okay, so now we have the circles inside the circles. We basically just did two circles inside our eyes. The next thing we want to do are those little arches over his eyebrows, and he has a super cute little wrinkly face. So we're going to do one arch going up and over, and another one going up and over. And then we wanna create that big V in the center. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna say, okay, here's my little center spot, and I'm gonna reach up and over. So it looks like we're doing another arch, but we're just connecting it all the way up and over. And you can make these as long or as short as you like. Okay, so now we are going to create a line kind of going up the center. And then if you like another one coming to the side, you can connect them or not, mine are not connected, but it really does not matter. Okay, so now you've got these little guys over here, line going up the center. And if you like, <clears throat> you are welcome to add any more little lines in here for any wrinkles that you may choose to have in his face. It's totally up to you, there, it's not necessary. Um, at this point, I like to sort of go over it just to make sure it's nice and dark so that I can really see through my paint because we are going to go over our pencil lines with our paint. Okay, so we've got this little guy. It's time to create Yoda by adding those ears in. Those are definitely his signature. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down here. Remember, don't go too far. Really keep it right about here. It's just sort of in this vicinity and you're going to reach across and remember, make those ears as long as you like. This is your piece, okay? So my first ear goes straight across and this is just a nice soft line. If you wanted to have a little bit of movement, like a little bit of bump to it, you totally can. I'm gonna go to the other side again. We want it to look realistic, so I don't worry too much about those lines having to be super straight, okay? Now we wanna bring those little ears in. When I come around, I'm not keeping it pointy like a cat. I'm sort of turning the corner and I'm dropping it down so it still looks like, like a point but just a soft rounded point, okay? So coming in, coming in, these lines are parallel, bringing it in and as I get closer, I'm going to start to drop down the hill and bring it into the side here. If you would like, you may bring that ear lower if you want. If you want it to be a bigger ear, bring it lower, that's fine. If you want this ear to be pointier, that's fine. Remember, you do you. Remember, this is seven-year-old, okay? So she saw her ears the way she saw them. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over here, go to the other side, come in, come in. Remember, these little guys are parallel. Now I'm going to start to drop, drop it, and bring it to the side of his head again. And again, don't stress too much if they don't land at the exact same spot as each other. Make those pointier if you like. Okay, so the inside of those ears, we need to basically mirror what we just did. So I'm gonna go inside here, I'm gonna drag it along, bring it in here, drop it down, and close it off. Same thing over here. Drag it along, bring it in, and close it off. Okay, so now we've got the inside of those ears. Those little ears are going to be pink. Okay, so now we can start moving down into the cloak a little bit. So what we wanna do next is this is going to be sort of where that first fold is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here where his little cheek is, and I'm actually gonna bring it up, so not right where we started, but bring it up just a little bit, and I'm going to drag it down, keep a little bit of a bump to it, and then bring it all the way across and click in, okay? Same thing on this side. Come up a little bit, drag it down, give a little bit of movement and bump to it so it looks real, and click, close it in. So now you've got a nice thick collar for his cloak. The next thing we're going to do are his arms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring one little guy here, and one little guy on this side. Now remember, you can bring his arms, you can have them shorter, you can have them longer, it's completely up to you. Okay, so now I've got this first line. One, two, 
And the next thing we're going to do is going to be the inside lines for his cloak. And I'm going to bring my first line dropping down here. And remember, this is sort of going to look like the letter A. So remember, it comes out kind of like an A shape. Okay, you can keep this as short or as long as you would like. Close out the bottom. Okay, next thing you're going to do are his little cuffs on his sleeves. So what I did was I brought out my first little line here from the cloak, and I'm gonna bring it across, across, and I'm gonna come out just a little bit and create a soft movement for that sleeve and bring it in. Okay, going to the next side, same thing. From one side, bring it across, a little bit of a movement, and close it, okay? Now, let's go ahead and do a little bit of detail. We're gonna keep a couple of lines coming straight down. So I'm going to do one and two. Notice I did not use a ruler. I don't stress or worry about lines having to be super perfect. Remember, the more imperfect something looks, the more realistic it tends to look. Okay, so for his little hands, you could absolutely do any type of hand that you like. But just to keep it simple, I'm just going to bring out a little line and curve it up and bring it in. So this almost looks like a little bit of a mitten. And then from here, I'm going to bring out one of his little nails. There's one nail. Now we want his, it to look like his thumbs are in there. So I'm going to create, create another little fingernail sort of poking out of that sleeve. Notice I'm not worrying about anything else down here. So we're going to go to the other hand. And the first thing I do is this little middle joint here, and I'm just going to bring out what feels like a little bit of a finger. And remember, these do not need to be even or perfect looking, makes them more real when they're not. And just bring out three little bumps. And don't forget those nails. That's really kind of the fun detail that matters here. Okay, so now we have our sketch of Baby Yoda. Okay. So we are good from here with our pencil. We can set that one down. Next step, we are going to create with our Sharpie. The only area that I Sharpied was the eye, right in here, okay? I did not Sharpie or trace over any other lines here. You're welcome to do that, but for me, I just wanted to do the eyes. So I'm just going to Sharpie all of the lines that I did with my eye, okay? And again, I'm using that ultra fine tip Sharpie. Um, if you use a regular size Sharpie, that's fine. You just wanna make sure that it's really nice and chiseled, really make sure that it's got a good tip on that. Okay, so I, you can see that I've done this part I wanna show you that I'm actually filling in just the corners because that's kind of a little hard spot to get with your paintbrush. So you know what, you might as well. Just fill it in, it's just a little smidge of an area. I'm leaving this guy in the center here and leaving that white because I can fill that in with black paint. If you're more comfortable filling it in with a Sharpie, then just do that, whatever you feel good with. I like to try to do as much of my piece in paint versus Sharpie so that it's not a Sharpie piece, but it's a painting. Okay, so I'm gonna fill in those little corners. He's gonna to start to come to life pretty soon. Okay, so when we start to go into our painting, remember we're using acrylic paints. So if you haven't used acrylic paints before, just know that they can stain your clothes. So make sure you throw on either a old shirt or an apron or something. If you get it on your hair or your nails, don't worry about it. That will actually come out super easy, but it's hard to get out of your clothes. Okay, <clears throat> so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a smallish brush just so that it can start getting in those details. I'm gonna pick something like this. Okay, that's gonna be for my face. I'm gonna start with the green. We're gonna go for the Yoda green. It's actually called celery green, but I think we'll call it Yoda green. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go right over my pencil lines. I'm gonna go real careful. When I come up to some of these edges or pencil lines, I flatten my brush. Notice that I'm doing a super thin 
amount of paint on here. And you'll see that I really don't have to dip into my paint very often. I'm just dragging it out as much as I can. I like my pieces to dry quickly. I like them to look really thin. You'll just fill all of those little guys in there. Just keep adding. And you can see why I chose a smaller brush because I have a little bit more control. And one of the things that you can do is you can hold it like a pencil. Sometimes people think you need to hold it way back here, but really if you just hold it like a pencil low, you'll have a lot of control over that. Brush it out nice and thin. Going over your pencil lines is nice because you don't have to go in between everything. Not every piece you can do that, but for this one we can. Definitely be sure to put some Star Wars music theme songs on when you're painting <laughs> because it's so much fun to paint with some sort of music that inspires you or moves your soul because that's what painting is all about is just getting in the groove and letting your heart do the work. When you do a piece that has to do with, you know, a character or a theme, like if you're doing an Irish piece or you're doing a French piece, you should definitely put on some music that coordinates with it because it's, it's sort of fun to get out of the norm. Okay, so now we're gonna go into those ears. I'm gonna be careful, but I'm also not going to stress too much if my paintbrush goes a little bit over those lines. I never worry too much because really I think of my pencil, like it's just a little bit of a guide, but my paintbrush is really the, the object that does the work for us. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in here. Remember, don't stress if you go over those a little bit. If you're using a canvas, a baby wipe is great for any of those extra little areas that you're like, oh no, I shouldn't have, you know, done that much paint or some paint dripped and I don't want it there. So you're just going to keep going in. Notice that if I go into a smaller area, I just turn my brush so that the bristles can fit in. Or there's going to be times that you might have to use a different size brush to go along with it. Now, while we have our, our brush out with our green, we might as well fill in those little hands, right? Might as well, but we do need to be careful when we're working on other areas like the cloak and the background that we don't smear that paint when we're moving our hand up and down. Okay, so this paint, if you do it thin enough, it will dry. Okay, so we've got those beautiful green areas. The next thing I like to do is I like to go into a little bit darker shade of green because I like to add a little bit of shading, fill in those lines, but what I tend to do is I tend to put a little bit on my palette or paper plate, whatever you have, and I like to just mix some of those colors. There's nothing better than getting to mix your own shades. So that way you can really figure out, hmm, maybe I want it to be darker or lighter. Or that's not the right shade. So mix the shades that you want, and this is when you're going to start to go in to some of those areas, like your little lines. And this all of a sudden transforms your little character into what looks like a real wrinkles, those little shadows, those little lines start to just, oh my gosh, she's alive. Okay, going into those little arches here. And again, remember I mixed sort of that darker shade, which is actually called shamrock green. The lighter shade I'm using is called celery. Uh, any of those shades that you, you see out there are so neat to have fun and pick out. So we're just gonna fill in a little bit of this guy. Okay, can fill in his smile for sure. Or his little mouth. Okay, he I feel like he's already coming to life. Now there might be times that you wanna fill in some more of the shadowing. So for instance, if we have our little lines in here and you wanna fill in a little bit, fill those in add a little bit because all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh he looks super real <laughs> i love that part okay going into this guy bringing it over here a little bit down here just kind of fill in where where you're feeling it you know maybe you want to bring a little bit over here so it looks like he's got some squishy cheeks
where that shadow would be. Okay, I think he looks really good so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into the inside of those ears. So I'm gonna just set my brush down. You never know if you have to go back in and touch it up. Again, I'm gonna pick a smaller brush. So again, when I say smaller brush, I'm gonna say something like this, okay? <clears throat> and I'm gonna start with the light pink. Now, one of the things that I did was I picked out a light pink and I put a little bit of red. That way I can adjust and mix the colors to how dark or light I want them. Maybe you want your ears to be super light pink and that's great, go for the super light pink. For me, I like to have a combination of both. So I sort of start off with this really pretty light pink. All right, and I'm gonna go to the other ear, get that one done too. And again, you, maybe you guys have more, more inner ear space than I do, or maybe you have less. It doesn't matter. Oops, see, I just went right in there. That's why I just said you gotta be careful. Hmm. I need to listen to my own advice. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to mix a little bit of that red and a little bit of that pink, just like I did for my greens. And I'm just gonna get the shade that I like. So it's not super bright red, because we don't want bloody ears. <laughs> but you can add a little bit of this. The other thing that I really like to do is I love to layer my colors. That's probably why I love watercolors so much, which we will do watercolors as well as our acrylics. But I love to layer the shades, okay? So you can see there's a little bit of that light pink, you know, poking through, and then you can go to this side and add a little bit more of that darker shade. So there's some red in there, but it's not, icky red. It's like a nice, just goes right in there. It looks like the inside of an ear. Okay, so I think that looks good so far. I'm going to put my paintbrush down, and <clears throat> the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill in the dark, dark brown part of the eye. So my eye color is going to be chocolate brown for this first circle that we created, the inside is going to be black. So I'm gonna take an itty bitty brush if I can, like this little guy. I mean, you can barely see it, this little guy. And I'm gonna dip into my chocolate brown. I'm gonna wipe some of that off <clears throat> first. And I'm gently, just gently tapping that brown in. Here's the thing, you don't have to stress if you accidentally put too much paint on because the beautiful thing about this is that black paint will truly go over any color as long as it's dry. So if you're like, great, I got black inside here, or brown inside there, don't worry about it. You will be able to use the black paint in a little bit to go over it. Don't stress. Sometimes what I do is I like to use the back of a paintbrush. If I'm like, you know what, I really need to get into a little tiny space, just use the back of it. Get creative. Maybe you need to use your pencil. Okay, so the brown is finished in there. I'm going to do the black in the center. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna use the same brush, but I'm just gonna wipe that brush off on either a piece of paper, or maybe I just brush it off on my palette so that it's got most of the, the brown off. I'm gonna dip into the black, and I'm gonna go right into the center, and I'm just real gently. Remember, I did not put a lot of paint on my brush, just super small amount. I'm gonna go right in there, fill this little guy in. Go to the other side, the key, with this black paint is not to do a lot. You have to be careful because it can smear and smudge and get everywhere. So just a little bit, okay? We're gonna leave him there for now. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our cloak. So the colors that you could choose, you guys could literally choose any shade of color. You could do a really light brown. You could do, gosh, you know, golden color. I'm going to do a color called khaki. So I'm gonna pick kind of a not too small, but not too big. I'll dip into my khaki, and I'm gonna go right into my collar first. Remember, press that brush down so those bristles flatten. Go right up to your first section of the collar. I try to go in one direction if possible, because you will see some of these brush strokes, and you will be so much happier with your final piece when you see that all those little brush strokes are going in one direction rather than some up here, some around here, some over here. So try it out. You know, maybe you'll have a couple pieces that will be all over the place and some other pieces you'll, you know, you'll feel like, okay, I'm gonna try this direction, you know, next time. 
So we've got our first little guy here. Going into the next part of the collar. I'm gonna go right up to my line. I can still see my pencil lines with this color. <clears throat> and we will go ahead and definitely use a little bit of the chocolate brown next time to sort of fill in a little bit of shading for some of these little pencil lines. Okay, so I've got this guy. Now I'm gonna go into my sleeves. Notice that I'm really keeping that paint thin. I'm not keeping it thick. I don't want thick paint because you'll have some areas that dry funky. It'll be like super thick in one area and it just won't look good or it'll start to drip or clump and keep it thin, brush it out. We've got a lot of paint here. The acrylic paint a little bit goes a long way, which is awesome because you don't end up needing to use that much. Okay, got my first little guy. We're going to go into that little cuff. Still using the same brush, but you know, there might be times where you say, hey, you know what, I need to use a couple of different sizes of brushes for certain areas. Like for instance, maybe you have really tiny little sleeves and you might have to use two brushes just for the cloak. I know I had to use two brushes for my background to get it over some of those little details. Again, I'm not stressed if I happen to go over pencil lines. I'm just gonna keep dragging it down. Same brush stroke, same direction. Okay, go into the cuff. We're getting closer. At this point, this is when you guys are gonna say, okay, do I wanna do a black background? Do I want to do a dark green? Do I want to do a little, you know, navy blue? You start to decide what color you're going to want for your background. All right, <clears throat> we've got some of that. Let's finish going down the center. And by the way, I am standing using an art easel. If you don't know what an art easel is, it's this nice big wood frame that's holding my canvas on here. I like to use these for painting. I love to stand and paint. There's, I just feel like I have a great angle on it. But you know what, you might wanna sit sometimes and stand sometimes, and a lot of times people, there are people who do not even like to use an easel, and sometimes they just like to keep it flat. So if you want your canvas flat, keep it flat. Or if you just have you know, a piece of paper, but you do have an easel, tape your piece of paper onto a book and put your book on the easel. You could get super creative. I mean, I definitely like to paint outside, so this is something you could also do. Take it outside. We'll do some tutorials outside too, which will be kind of fun once it's not so windy out. Getting in here. And again, don't stress if you go outside the lines, especially for if you're doing a black background like I did, because the black is gonna go right over it. <laughs> You'll never see it. Okay, now in a minute, when I finish with this part, we're gonna dip into our chocolate brown, and that is literally the name of the paint that I'm using, is chocolate brown. So that chocolate brown is going to give us an area of some shading so we can, those little lines on his creases and pleats of his cloak will pop out. Okay. So now, same brush. I'm gonna take that brush. And again, I'm going to just sort of wipe off some of the excess paint that I used from my khaki. I'm going to dip into the chocolate brown now. I'll make sure I don't have too, too much on my brush. And now you can start to go into some of those areas that we had for our lines, okay? So for instance, this little divide on the collar, you could do this area. You can drag it out as much as you want, and you could do it darker than me. 
I just wanted it to be sort of subtle so it looked like shading in here, soft. I feel like that just gives some movement. You can go into some of these lines over here to divide. <clears throat> I can go right down the center to where those little pleats were. Okay. <clears throat> the other side, so now you see you've got a little bit of that dark brown showing off those lines that you created those details in his jacket. Again, decide how much, you know, do I want it darker? Do I want it lighter? Do I want none? Maybe you don't want any. I think that would still be just as fine. You would just be, sort of see that charcoal from your pencil. I like it when there's some areas that are a little bit darker than others, so it's not perfectly symmetrical. Okay, bring out a little bit over here. Captivate his little sleeves, those beautiful big sleeves. And you've got an awesome looking cloak here. I'm gonna add a little bit right here. Notice that I barely used any of that brown paint. It was so subtle. And when this dries, it will be the same color as this guy. So sometimes those colors change a little bit after they've dried. <clears throat> okay, now we definitely wanna add his little fingernails. And for me, I just use the same sort of little khaki color. You are welcome to use a gold color if you have it or like a mustard yellow or something, but I'm just gonna drag those out so they're in there so we don't forget about them when we go into our black paint. Okay, <clears throat> got his little nails in there, his little claws, nails, I guess. Um, so now the next thing that we wanna do before we start going into the background is we want to create these little reflection dots. Now, I feel like with reflection dots, they really make an animal or a creature or a being come to life. So we're going to add this. We're going to do two on each. So I'm going to take a brush <clears throat> and I'm going to use the back of my brush. I'm going to dip just a tiny smidge of white, like barely even touch into the white. And I'm gonna go into the corner of this black circle and do a little tiny dot right there. One, and then I'm gonna go in a diagonal to the other corner, two. And notice that that is super small. Go to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. It's basically the same exact thing that we just did, just over here. One and two, awesome. Now, if you're like me and stick your hand into the wet paint, <laughs> you might have to go in and touch up any areas. Did you see that? I just put my hand in the whole thing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so now our little Yoda is, he is complete and I love how he looks. You guys can at this point leave him on the white. You could do a dark green background. It's completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and do the black paint for the black background because that's what I liked for mine. So with a canvas, you're going to have some sides of your canvas and you can decide if you want to do the tops and the sides of it, or if you wanna just do the front. There is absolutely no right or wrong way of doing this. I just ask that when you're doing your piece for your black, you be careful not to really scoop a ton of paint on there because it can drip and honestly it can totally ruin your piece if you get black paint all over something and then have to try to wipe it off it can be pretty devastating so just make sure that you're really careful and conservative on how much paint that you're actually putting on your brush okay so i'm just going to continue on now <laughs> it's going to start to get a little bit hairier as we get closer to our Yoda because we don't want to go over our green paints. And notice that I'm still trying really hard to keep my brush stroke going in the same direction. <clears throat> As you get closer to some of these areas that are a little bit smaller, you're gonna wanna go extra slow. You're gonna want to flatten that brush 
nice and flat. See those bristles flattening? And you're going to go really careful. This may be a point where you say, okay, I want to use another size brush so that I don't have to worry about my piece getting ruined. So far, I'm doing pretty good. Going nice and slow. I am not rushing it. I know at this point you're kind of like, oh my gosh, are we done yet? Like it's, you know, we've been sketching and, and we're painting and now we're getting to these little areas where we have to learn and test our own patience. So just go slow, be careful. If you need to take a break and then come back to it, do that. Better to do that than to just be like, okay, I'm done and it gets everywhere and then you're frustrated. So now I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna again, go really slow. And you guys can see I have a nice angled, large brush for this guy because it helps me get into those little details. But honestly, don't worry if you don't have brushes and all that stuff yet. You guys can accumulate those over some time. All right, I'm gonna carefully go around my little cloak and collar. Sometimes I find that I hold my breath when I'm painting. Does anybody else do that? Okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you guys a trick here in a second, but sometimes what I do is I will actually turn my entire canvas to the side or just around just to get a better angle. It doesn't matter. You're just doing the background, but sometimes that can help. Or if your arm starts to get tired, it helps. Okay, so now I gotta be careful of these little fingers down here. Those little tiny nails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a smaller brush for that area because I will probably mess that up if I don't. Okay, grabbing a smaller brush and I'm just gonna go sort of right in between And there's nothing wrong with using the same brushes, you know, for your piece. You just want to make sure that you wash them off or wipe them off really well before changing colors. Okay, Whew. we did that one well. <clears throat> okay, still going with the black. Now, I'm going to show you what I was talking about with flipping the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way across. Carefully, slowly, flatten those bristles. Almost there. Okay. All right, I'm going to finish this out because I'm already here. And I did do the sides of mine. But again, you don't have to. Totally don't have to. We have lots and lots of pieces hanging in our house that don't have the sides done. And not everybody likes that look. All right, I'm gonna lift my guy up here so I can get down low. Get this filled in. There we go. All right, we've got one little section left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn it so I have a better angle. And I'm just going to come up this way. I think he looks super cute so far. Okay, <clears throat> fill in all those little white areas. I'm gonna go real careful right up to my little cloak lines. Slow, flatten those bristles. And again, remember you can use another size brush for these areas. Nice and slow. I still have paint over here that I can keep using. 
nice and slow. I don't want to go into his face too much. Okay. All right, remember just to go slow. <clears throat> All right, we made it. We survived that area. We have one little section left before we add in our stars, which you totally don't have to do. In fact, if you want, with this black paint, you could completely add in some shades of blue to your black paint and it would look like the galaxy. You could add navy blue, you could add like a bright blue. And by adding that into the black, they'll mix into those beautiful sort of dark navies and galaxy colors. And you could put it on with a sponge or you could put it on with a brush. It really doesn't matter. Okay, last little section here. All right, we're gonna grab our small brush to go back in and go around our little fingers again. All right, he's adorable. I love him, I'm so happy with him. Okay, <clears throat> so at this point, this is where we're at. You can see that the paint is still wet and that's okay. You can still do this next step with the paint being wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you guys <clears throat> how to do this. So I'm gonna move this easel here All right, so we are going to turn the camera so you guys can see this. All right, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a fluffier brush. I'm going to dip into my white paint. I've got a nice amount on here. It's not crazily covered, but it's got enough. I'm going to go over my painting and just in the black spots, don't worry if you get a little bit on your Yoda, I'm going to hold with one hand and I'm going to tap my finger on this one. And when I do that, you will start to create some itty bitty stars. Now, if you get a couple of little white splatters on your Yoda. Don't stress too much. I don't have too many, just one little one here and one here. Okay, so you guys can see creating that gives a little bit of a galaxy look, a little bit of stars. So it's sort of fun to add those. Again, you don't have to do that, but I think that our Yoda turned out awesome. If you guys have any questions at all or if you want some help, I'm happy to help you, happy to answer some questions for you. I can't wait to hear about your pieces and I look forward to the next tutorial with you guys. Thanks so much, bye.